Do-it-yourself is being applied in a new way to the manufacture of widely used generic drugs, and that holds major implications for what consumers and hospitals could pay in the future. One of the leaders of this significant market disruption is here with us today to explain what's going on. Welcome to Advancing Health, a podcast brought to you by the American Hospital Association. I'm Tom Petterly, senior writer in AHA's Washington office and your podcast host. So let's tee this up. Drug shortages, caused in part by skyrocketing drug prices, are impacting patient care, with prices also putting strains on hospital budgets and operations. A recent report from AHA, in collaboration with the Federation of American Hospitals and the American Society of Health System Pharmacists, found that average drug spending per hospital admission increased by 18.5% between 2015 and 2017. One in four hospitals had to cut staff to ease the budget pressures created by high drug prices, and nearly eight in ten hospitals found it very hard to obtain certain drugs. Those shortages drove prices up even more. Civica Rx, a new company headquartered in Salt Lake City, is here to correct that situation. Civica is an innovative new company formed by a consortium of hospitals. Its goal is to liberate patients and providers from unsustainable pricing practices, as well as to stabilize the supply of essential generic medications. All of this came to Capitol Hill on February 7th, when lawmakers and staffers received the drug pricing report and heard from the experts about what can be done. Martin Van Trieste, President and CEO of Civica Rx, was among the speakers at the AHA's Hill Briefing, and it's our privilege to have him here with us today. Thanks for joining us, Martin. Thank you. Can you give us a brief overview of what Civica Rx is and who makes up the group? Yeah, so Civica Rx is a generic, non-for-profit, non-stock bearing, no equity investment generic drug company that was started by four health systems. And uh, the reason they started it was because drug shortages became a national crisis and no one was stepping up to solve that issue. And they felt this was the best way for them to do that. And you're off to a good start. You've got plenty of systems and uh, hospitals and systems joining. Is Civica open to all hospitals and systems? And are those who are not members, uh, will they be able to have access to the low-cost generics that you will manufacture in the future? So Civica is open to every health system to become a member. Mm -hmm. uh, we make membership very easy to join. Uh, it's, it would cost a one-time donation from a health system of $300 per license bed. That's capped at a million dollars. So a small community hospital of 10 beds can well afford it, and so can the largest health systems in the country. Uh, and uh, we manufacture product at the direction of our members based on their predicted volume. So we won't be able to sell to non-members because we're making it to the demand of our members. I see. What was the catalyst for forming uh, for forming Civica Rx? I mean, was there a tipping point that led to its creation? Yeah, I, I think what happened was here you have health systems struggling, and drug shortages really do have a negative outcome on patient care, right? Treatments are either delayed or canceled or they have to find alternate therapies to treat a patient, and some, most of those are suboptimal for a patient perspective. Also, within the health system, when there's a drug shortage, uh, there's a higher propensity for medication errors, which creates a safety concern for patients, and it's a very disruptive force. Uh, I've had health systems tell me that they have tens, of, tens and 20 people just running around trying to find drugs that are on shortage. Then they have other groups of physicians that are meeting in a room to say, what do we do? Right. How do we treat these patients still? And then they have other groups of people that are changing all the automation in the hospital because it's very, very regimented on how they use drugs and where. So the health records, you know, the, the barcode readers, everything has to change over. So there's a big financial penalty, a safety penalty, and an inconvenience to the health system. And so... A uh, gentleman by the name of Dan Lilliquist, who was a strategy officer at Intermountain Healthcare, uh, came up with this idea to create this generic mm -hmm. drug company, nonprofit, to solve these problems. And uh, Dan was the perfect person to come up with the idea. He's an outsider to the pharmaceutical industry and to the health systems and hospitals. Dan is a lawyer by training, 
never practiced law, went into consulting, then opened up his own company, and then he actually became a state senator in the state of Utah. And so he's very up to date and speed all the things going around. He's super passionate, super persistent, and he really wants to, in his heart, do something here. So that's that's how it all gets started and why. It's an interesting story. Not only are, are pricey new specialty drugs worrying hospitals and health systems, but there are big, big price hikes for, for common drugs such as insulin, and they're creating problems as well. So what is Civica's evaluation process to determine which drugs you will focus on manufacturing, and do hospitals and health systems get a say in that? Well, the health systems and hospitals have the only say in it. So we have a drug selection committee that meets quarterly, consists of about 30 pharmacy professionals, mm -hmm. and they decide what drugs we should make and what priority we should make them in. And then that's reevaluated every quarter. So things could come off the list or move up in priority based on current market conditions. Are, are drugs like insulin that have been in, in uh, uh, used for a long, long time, are they easier to manufacture than some of the, the specialty drugs that we, we see coming along today? So, you know, insulin's what they call a biological product, and they're much harder and more complex to manufacture than what we would call traditional small molecules, which are like, you know, aspirin, uh, you know, morphine, things of that nature. When a specific drug is in short supply and, and extremely difficult to obtain, which has been a problem, as you mentioned, uh, nationwide for some time, it has the potential to impact patient care. So how does Civica Rx intend to address the more frequent occurrences of drug shortages so that the patients we serve are not impacted? Yeah, so the GEO did a, a study, and they say if you want to predict the next drug shortage, look in the past if it was on shortage before, and that's a good indication that it will be short again. And so the Civica operating model is very designed to be very disruptive and different. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do is be a very pro-competitive uh, solution to the problem. And what I, why I mean that is when health systems become members and we then bring a drug to market, they have the ability to opt in for that drug or opt out because every hospital has different protocols. Mm -hmm. If they opt in, we ask them for a long-term commitment, five, seven, or ten years, depending on the drug, and we make them commit to us 50% or one half of their annual volume over that period of time. And that's a real guarantee. It's called a take or pay contract. Once we have that commitment, we give that commitment to our people who are manufacturing for us. Mm -hmm. And what that does, it takes uncertainty out of manufacturing. So if, as a manufacturer, the worst thing is uncertainty. But if I take that away, and you know over the next 10 years, I need to build this many pieces of product, I, need to, I know it's going to bring in this much revenue at this much margin. Now you've eliminated the uncertainty, so you now invest in the business. You improve capacity, you add capacity, you stay up to speed with the latest GMPs that the FDA requires pharmaceutical companies to manufacture. You invest in your people, mm -hmm. and you try to simplify your supply chain by bringing production closer to your manufacturing plants. So that's one way that we're different, right? We want to be pro-competitive. We don't want to be one manufacturer standing, and that's what happens. When there's one manufacturer making the product, any difficulties that one manufacturer has or the supply chain has, one, they can't recover fast enough, mm -hmm. and no one else is ready to fill that need, right? So, so that's a real important piece, that pro-competitive piece. We will also only manufacture in redundant manufacturing capacity. So even if one of our plants go down, there's another one that can pick up the slack and always be running. So that redundancy will also keep safety stock. So we'll, we, our target is to keep six months of safety stock. Mm -hmm. So if there is a disruption, we, we got a safety buffer for our members for at least six months, and we should be able to recover within six months. So that's what that's why we're different, and that's why you shouldn't see, we can break this cyclical cycle of drug shortages. Thank you. Is that a, um, a model that's meant to be replicated or could be replicated around the country? Yeah, so first of all, we're very transparent in everything we do. You can find out our entire business model on our website. Mm -hmm. and we do presentations all over the country. It's very obvious what we're doing. And our goal is if we're a good actor and we do our jobs well and we prove that we can bring product to the market, other people might follow what we're doing. And we we'll almost be like a policing function in the marketplace. However, there's always going to be bad actors, and that's why you need a policeman around. 
a lot of attention has been paid on the high prices that consumers pay at the pharmacy counter. And of course, that's a serious issue. The hospitals and health systems as major buyers of prescription drugs sometimes maybe get left out of a larger conversation. How serious is this issue for hospitals and what do you think can be done to rein in cost? Yeah, so uh, there are two problems that we're working on. One is drug shortages and the other one is what we call predatory pricing. So we only make generic product because I can't make a patented product from somebody else and we're not going to have a big R&D function to develop our own products. So we work focus on generics, we focus on sterile injectables and these generics are decades old, right? So that's what we're doing. But other individuals and companies have created monopolies on some of these very old products that don't have patent protection, either by exclusive contracts with their active pharmaceutical ingredient suppliers, uh, very restrictive distribution pathways. So at Civica, we would have to buy samples of the existing product mm -hmm. so we can do studies comparing it to what we're bringing to market. So if you have a restricted distribution system, and some of them are like this, your doctor writes the prescription and sends it to the company, the company sends you a one-month supply at a very high and outrageous price. Now, I can't get that as a generic, as in a sufficient quantity to do my studies. So using those two processes, uh, exclusive contracts, very restrictive um, distribution system. They get to charge prices like they're a, they're a branded product. And so there are products like that in companies who do that for a living and for-profit companies find it hard to compete. Because if I have to go get my own active pharmaceutical ingredient, I have to bring up an API, an active pharmaceutical ingredient manufacturer that's not there now. Mm -hmm. That takes time and money. And then I have to submit it to the FDA and get approval. That could be a five-year process. Mm -hmm. Now, I also know as an investor, the moment I came out with that low-cost generic product, the competition who has this monopoly has made billions of dollars over those five years. And the moment I come out, he wants to drive me out of business. He lowers the price to zero. He gives it away. He doesn't need to make any more money right now. He gives it away, and he drives me out of business, and he brings the price back up. Now, if I know that's going to happen in a for-profit company, that uncertainty prevents me from making that investment. But as a non-for-profit company, I'm not worried about profit. And my members give me, guarantee half their volume to me, so that guy can't drive me out of business. So that's part of our disruptive model to break that predatory pricing cycle. It's a fascinating model. So earlier today, you were on Capitol Hill, you explained the model, you took some questions about it, you made a major case. Do you think that you were heard? Do you th think that they're listening up there and, and open to, uh, to a new way of doing business? Yeah, um, you know, I spend a lot of time since we started Civica going to Capitol Hill and doing briefings and education for congressional and senatorial staffers and even meeting with a few congressmen and senators. And no matter who I talk to, Democrat or Republican, they like what we're doing. It's a bipartisan approach. Now, they like it maybe for different reasons. You know, the, 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 the Republicans like it because it's a market-based solution and they don't have to do much, too much. And Democrats uh, are really worried about high prices and they're looking for a solution. And this way, this is a solution ready to go and they don't have to do any large efforts, right? Right. Thank you, Martin, for your time today, and also for your leadership and the critical effort to keep life-saving drugs within the reach of patients and providers. And thanks for listening. For more information on drug shortages, drug pricing, and other pressing issues, visit AHA.org. I'm Tom Hederley, and this has been Advancing Health, a podcast brought to you by the American Hospital Association.